<laughs> wow, 500 subscribers. Thank you so much, people. Hello and welcome. My name is Andrei Sokolov. I'm CG artist, generalist and developer. And today we are going to be recreating the EV Nebula from this video. First of all, I would like to say that the ideas of the initial video and of the whole tutorial series were inspired by gorgeous works by Theon van der Zalm. If you don't know who is he, you should definitely check out his channel for the most beautiful nebula in the whole universe. And also I should mention the great research and artworks done by Gleb Alexandrov with creating nebula in Blender. I am happy to live on the same planet and at the same time with such people. Ok, let's jump right into it. I will be using Blender version 2.83.1, which you can download for free from the official Blender site. Select default light, X to delete it, select default cube, press S50 to scale it 50 times. This time we will need a really large nebula domain. In Outliner, rename the cube object to Nebula. Select it in the viewport, press Ctrl A and choose Scale to apply scale. Go to the Materials tab and rename Cube Material to Nebula. I like to keep things organized from the very beginning. Pull up Timeline window to get some more room. In the 3D viewport press 0 on numpad to enter the camera view. Go to the timeline and change the window type to Shader Editor. Change 3D view mode to Rendered by pressing Z and choosing Rendered. Change the Shader Editor type to World and holding Ctrl and right mouse button cut out this link. No Drangler add-on must be enabled. Switch back to the Object mode. Select default principled BSDF and press X to delete it. Then press Shift A and choose Texture, Mask Grave Texture. Ctrl Shift click on it to see how it looks with the viewer. Change its type to Ridged Multifractal and play with the settings. Crank up detail all the way up to 16, lower dimension all the way down to 0, adjust lacunarity a little bit up to 2.2, increase gain until you start to get this energy look, something about 20, tweak offset just a touch down to minus 0.03 and lower the scale down to minus 1.5. Now, as we've got this dark energy looking texture, we need to invert it. As we already know, in Blender, colors are represented as certain digits. Black means 0, white means 1, 0.5 means gray, and the combination of those numbers for the base red, blue and green channels gives us all colors. This means we can perform the usual math operation of the color values, and the color will be changing accordingly to those operations. So, press Shift A and choose Converter, Map Range. What it basically does is just converts one range of numbers to another. So, to invert incoming color values from the texture, we just need to swap from min and from max values. Then we set to min to minus 500 and to max to 20, to map the inverted and common result between those two values. So the most part of the inverted texture values now should turn out to be under the zero, because we have set to mean parameter far below the zero. So we will see only those few parts of the texture, which were left in the range between zero and 20, set in to max value. This allows us to achieve those sharp edges look and volumetrics which we will be able to see a minute later. Press Shift A, Shader, Principled Volume. Connect the map range output to the density and connect the shader to the volume socket of material output because we will be working with the material, not with the surface. Crank up emission strains just a touch to start to see something. Or maybe it would be even better now to connect map range into it to avoid unnecessary emission on the barely visible parts of the density. And let's add even more. Shift A, converter, math, change its mode to multiply and set the value to something like 0.001 to lower the incoming values from the texture to emission strength. It is too much, so let's better change the type to power instead. And here we start to see something. Something blocky. So we go to the render settings, look for the volumetrics and adjust some settings. Set tile size to the minimum 2 pixels, crank up samples all the way up to 256 and adjust distribution all the way up to 1. The tile size affects volumetric texture precision, which means how sharp this is. 
Volumetric samples, together with render samples, are extremely important values, which determine what parts of the volumetric texture will be drawn. If any of them is set to the too low number, you will get some weird leather noise artifacts, especially on the animation, because certain parts of your volumetric textures just won't be drawn at all. The distribution allows Eevee to draw more samples closer to the camera, which should adjust the quality when we are going to fly right inside our nebula. Now, in the 3D viewport, press 0 on the numpad to enter the camera view, and press Shift tilde key to fly around like in the video game and find a good point of view. This looks nice, but I would like to adjust some camera settings to get more wide view angle. So I select the camera, go to the camera settings and change the focal length to 35mm. Now let's continue to tweak our volumetric material. Select the nebula object, jump back into the shader editor, select the power node, press Shift D to duplicate it and plug it right before the density input. Let's increase the exponent value to something like 2.04. Be sure that this value is not some even number, I mean that it cannot be evenly divided by 2. Because in this case we also use negative values coming from the map range. And the negative value, multiplied by the same negative value, which is what exactly power function does, will give you a positive value, which will annul all what we've done before. So as I said, we set it to some fluid number near the 2 but not to itself. Get some more room, select Musgrave Texture and press Shift D to duplicate it. As we've already got the main clouds, we will be using it for adding a semi-transparent star gas floating between those main clouds. Ctrl Shift click on it to see it with the viewer and Shift right click to cut out this shader link. Now we need to make some adjustments. Let's increase the scale to some value closer to the zero to get larger clouds, minus 0.25 for example. Lower the detail to 7 or 8 to make the texture smoother, leave dimension as it is, maybe lower lacunarity and offset just a touch. Gain seems to be ok. Select map range, shift D to duplicate it and plug right after the new Musgrave texture. We don't need such an unbalanced range here. Those clouds should be spread more evenly, so we change two mean and two max values to minus 10 and plus 10. Duplicate any math node and plug it right before the density input. Change the mode to add, because we will be adding the gas to the main clouds. Duplicate it one more time and plug after the second map range. Change the mode to multiply to control the amount of this gas texture and set the value to some extremely low number, something like 0.01 or even minus 0.01, which will invert it back, but in this case it doesn't really matter much, because all we need from it is to get some barely visible semi-transparent clouds in between the main clouds. Connect multiply to add, so now we've got the first texture with just a touch of the second texture blended to it. Now we will do the same for emission strains. Duplicate a couple more math nodes, Plug one right before emission strains and change the mode to add. Connect the second map range to this free math node, be sure it is set to multiply and connect it to that add node. So now we start to see how our gas starts to glow. Let's play with the amount of that glow, maybe set it to some positive value instead of we did for the density. In the 3D view zero numpad and shift tilde to fly around. I'd like to add some more glue to the main clouds. So back to the shader editor, get some room, duplicate some of the math nodes with Shift D and plug it right before the gas glow add node. Let's crank it up maybe to 10. Yes, looks good. Make some cleanup to keep things organized and now we'll start to add a color. As in the previous lessons, we will be using a different type of texture to add the color. Press Shift A, texture, noise texture and connect it to emission color. Let's leave the scale at 5, crank up details all the way up to 16 and leave it like here for now. Press Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp. Change the black color to something reddish and the white color to something bluish. Fly around to see how different parts of the volumetric clouds look now and play with the colors till you get some results you like. And now we will do another thing which we haven't done in the previous tutorials. We will use density and absorption colors to add another interesting effect. So, we add another color ramp, press Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp. Plug our color texture into it and plug it into the volumetric color. Let's make it something bluish, from the dark deep blue to the very light blue. The effect here is very subtle, because we don't use external lights, but now it will become more obvious as we start to use it for absorption. 
In order to do this properly, we need to change the hue. So we press Shift A, Color, Hue Saturation. Connect the color ramp to the color socket and connect it to the absorption color. But before we start, let me show you how absorption works. Depending on its color value, it starts to absorb a certain amount of light passing through it. So, when by default it is set to black, it absorbs nothing, because black is zero, so the amount of absorption equals zero. But when we start to increase this color value, pushing it closer to the white, which means to the one, it starts to absorb a certain amount of light, or emission in our case. This also means that if we use a certain saturated color from absorption, it subtracts this color from the emission colors. So we need to turn the hue all the way up to the one to absorb the emission colors opposite to the volume color. It may sound a bit complicated, but you just need to try it out and play with the settings to better understand how it works. So that's what I'm going to do next. Just play with the emission and absorption colors to get the result I like. Also, I would like to rearrange notes a bit, not to be confused by messing their meanings. I select the first texture and map range, press Ctrl-J to add a frame around them, and name it Clouds Main. Do the same with the second texture, select Ctrl-J, name it Gas. Select Color Notes, Ctrl-J, and name it Color. Select Math Notes, press H to hide them, and S to scale them down. Take a fly around with Shift tilde key to see the volumetrics from different sides to ensure that everything looks good. Now I want to add some stars, and this time I will be using the different technique. I will be adding them directly to the volumetric texture instead of making a particle system, like we have been doing in the previous tutorials. Actually, it is more unpredictable, renders slower, needs more RAM, more render and volumetric samples to even start showing something, and in some cases, some of the stars randomly just won't be rendered at all. But anyway, I want to show you this technique, just you to know that it exists and you can make things this way. I press Shift A and choose Texture, Voronoi Texture. We will be using Voronoi cells to get our stars. Ctrl Shift click on it to add a viewer, Shift right click to cut out the shader link, and we see those giant cells. Let's increase the scale up to 10 to make them smaller. Press Shift A Converter Map Range. We need those black cores to become white, so again we invert in common texture by swapping from min and from max values, but now we need to set from min value very low to leave only small spheres and cut out all other color information. Clamp checkbox in this case must be checked. So we set it to something like 0.04 or even lower, and let's add it to the emission strength by duplicating this add node with Shift D, plugging it right before the emission strength input. Also, we will need to control its brightness, so I press Shift A, Converter, Math, and set it to Multiply. Connect the shader back to the output, you may just Ctrl Shift click on it, and now we start to see those tiny pale stars. Let's increase their brightness by cranking up multiply value really high and make them even smaller by setting map range from mean value to even lower value, something like 0.01. In the 3D viewport, press 0 on the numpad to enter the camera view. Maybe set stars multiply value by something even higher, like 500, to make them really bright. And this time I will add some bloom. I go to the render settings, enable bloom, and set intensity up to 0.1. You can try to play more with the colors of emission and absorption to get more interesting results or ruin everything you've already done, depending on your level of luck. But anyway, I'd like to add HDRI to it. So I switch shader editor to world mode, connect background back to world output, select background and press Ctrl T to add an input texture with texture coordinates and mapping nodes. Press open and find a path to my favorite self-made HDRI. Select it and press open image. Now it is plugged into the background, but I can't see it because... Background should be plugged into the surface, not into the volume. Switch back to the object mode, make some more color adjustments if you would. The one more thing I'd like to do is to rotate background environment, so I switch shader editor back to the world mode and in the mapping node rotate it till I get a result I like. This is space, so I don't care about where is up and down here because there's no up and down, and I can rotate it depending only on what I like to feel myself like the master of the universe. Okay, that will do. 
Don't forget to crank up render samples. Make sure that they are not lower than volumetric samples. Because I remind you that for volumetrics, sample really matters. So everything seems to be ready, and I can press Ctrl F12 to render animation. Well, alright, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe this channel and press the like button, leave your comments. You can download the project file from the link in the video description. So I wish you good luck in making your own EV nebulas, and I hope to see you in the next videos. Bye bye. Bye bye.